The way organizations develop and deploy applications has changed dramatically over the last few years. DevOps methodologies have shifted control outside the purview of centralized IT organizations, and in many cases, accelerated the adoption of applications. Despite this, application security, and specifically WAF, has not kept pace with these dynamics. So with that in mind, I'm pleased to be joined by the Chief Strategy Officer and one of the founders of ThreadX, Brett Settle. Brett, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you, and looking forward to it. So Brett, I know you were a CISO at one point, and I'd love to hear your perspective on some of the key issues that CISOs and their security teams face when trying to protect cloud native applications and the impact that DevOps has had on the application security landscape and ultimately how ThreadX is addressing that. Yeah, well, great question. And uh, you know, it goes without saying, I think that there's always a shortage of security resources, but in the application space, you know, the two things really come together. One is obviously the adoption of the cloud and the fact that uh, applications can be deployed across multiple cloud environments, third party environments, some still residing within the you know, core data centers. And then the second piece is really from a skills perspective, you're dealing with a lot of different technology stacks. And so for most security teams, it's nearly impossible for them to keep up with the intricate details of each of those application stacks. And then furthermore, the development teams are constantly revving those applications, customizing those applications, adding bolt-ons or plugins. And so what you end up with is a really you know, broad attack surface area with a ton of different technologies that you're expected to understand the intricate nuances and how attackers might uh, you know, target those vulnerabilities. So specifically to WAF, I mean, two of the, the issues that we've historically seen there has been that those products are uh, costly and, and there's an efficacy issue. So they can be expensive to procure, deploy and maintain. There's a lot of tuning that goes in to make sure you're not getting false positives uh, and that can be labor intensive. So what does ThreadX do differently to address those issues? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the biggest differentiation that we have is that we don't just make a binary decision looking at uh, the inbound traffic, uh, looking for, you know, static signatures, static rules but we actually take a, a step backwards and we focus on the attackers themselves. And so we'll monitor an individual user, we'll monitor how they interact with the application and any indication of suspicious behavior, we begin building that audit trail from the very beginning. And then we assign risk based on the classification of where are they at in terms of reconnaissance or mapping, or are they getting deep enough to you know, attempt certain exploits? And then based on where they're at in the kill chain, as well as the intensity of how they're interacting with the applications, along with numerous other kind of you know, data detection capabilities that we have, those all come together so that we can build a risk profile and then make an accurate blocking decision based on that information, while also giving the customer the visibility to all those details. And so I think the biggest differentiation, you know, in addition to moving beyond binary decisions is, that visibility allows our customers to really understand why we blocked a certain attacker, what they were targeting, what techniques they were using. And it also helps them build confidence that the solution is working. And they do this without creating hundreds, you know, sometimes thousands of different rules that they have to manage across their applications. I want to go back to something you, you mentioned before, which is the skill shortage. And, and we, you know, we know that really that impacts tier two apps because organizations are going to prioritize their business critical applications. So maybe go into a little more detail on what's the risk that organizations have around these secondary applications and how should they think about addressing security there with the limited skills that they may have? Yeah. And I know in my prior experiences, we did a lot of acquisitions, a lot of mergers as well as we just had old technology legacy stacks that were sitting out there. And the reality is from a hacker point of, of view, you know, they're going to be exploring those edges. They're looking for the weakest link in the chain. And so when they're targeting a particular organization, you know, it's fairly easy for them to poke around, determine what the exposed either API endpoints or applications are, and then begin testing those applications. And as you identified, most companies, you know, it's a struggle to protect 10 to 15% of those apps. So they may have the right skill sets, they may have all the monitoring in place, um, but you know, they may not have eyes on those tier two apps. The second big piece really in that you know, particular scenario is gonna be just the fact that without the application skill sets, maybe those tier two applications or legacy applications 
don't have the strong development teams or don't really have a lot of resources, period. That's where you struggle implementing, you know, the testing and some of the other kind of development oriented protocols that you want to have for your security. When organizations think about all the different runtime application security controls uh, that are available, so you know, WAF, API protection, bot mitigation, DDoS, things like that, how do they prioritize relative to what's most applicable to them? What should they be thinking about? Yeah, the reality, and this is one of the things that I'm most proud of with ThreatX is, you know, a lot of different industries have different attack vectors. It may be account takeover, it may be scraping, or it may be bot uh, mitigation. Some companies, you know, DDoS attacks are very common for them. But the reality is you really need a solution that can provide, you know, capabilities in each of those areas. Because if you're focused only on bot capabilities, you may be missing the low and the slow type of attacks that are coming through. And again, with the approach we've taken at ThreatX, focusing on the attackers, some of the key capabilities that we have to fingerprint uh, IDs, fingerprint attacks coming from multiple IPs, that allows us then to be very effective as both a WAF uh, type solution, but also you know, leak into the bot capabilities, the DDoS capabilities, uh, and certainly API protection. Really interesting stuff, Brett. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk about ThreatX and application security with me. Oh, enjoyed it. And thanks again.